of topical questions. We'll next hear from the uh, Cabinet Secretary for Justice on a statement on the Chief Constable's leave of absence. If members wish to ask a question of the Cabinet Secretary, would they please press their request to speak buttons now? And I call on Michael Matheson to deliver the statement. Thank you, President Officer. On 8th of September, the Scottish Police Authority agreed to a request from the Chief Constable to take a leave of absence while allegations against him are independently investigated by the Police Investigations and Review Commissioner. He issued a statement at that point to deny the allegations and signal his intention to return once the matter had been resolved. The PERC is currently carrying out three investigations into allegations, which after preliminary assessment, she considered, if proven, would amount to gross misconduct. So, <laughs> officer, I will give Parliament as much information as I can this afternoon. However, this is still a live investigation and there are legal issues that I must respect that will constrain the information that can be provided. However, I welcome the opportunity to clarify the engagement the government had with the SPA around this matter. So, officer, the SPA and other public bodies are often described as operating at arm's length from government. This means that they have a significant degree of independence within their statutory functions, but operate within a policy framework set by ministers. The SPA, as a public body, is accountable to ministers for the exercise of its functions. And even though ministers do not normally become involved in individual decisions, the way the body carries out its functions must retain the confidence of ministers. Throughout this process, the government has maintained the position that decisions are for the SPA as a body which has the statutory duty to consider complaints of misconduct against senior officers. At the same time, as a public body that is accountable to ministers, as accountable to, as accountable to ministers, it is legitimate to seek assurances that the SPA is carrying out its functions in a way that is proportionate, accountable, transparent and consistent with the principles of good governance as required by legislation. All the government's actions have been focused upon ensuring due process and fairness to all parties. The SPA is reviewing the Chief Constable's leave position on a four-weekly basis, with the first review on the 5th of October, resulting in a continuation of the leave arrangements. The position was due for review again in early November, and there was no indication from SPA that there was likely to be any change at that point. I'm clear that the onus was very much on the SPA to inform the Scottish Government if a change in circumstances was considered likely. On the 9th of November, the then Chair of the Scottish Police Authority, Andrew Flanagan, asked to meet me. At the meeting, he informed me that the SPA board had decided to invite the Chief Constable to resume his duties the following day. I understand that this decision was taken in a private session of the board on the 7th of November. There had been no indication that a return to duties was being considered at that point. When I met the former chair and learned of the board's decision, I sought assurances that they had followed due process. Unfortunately, he was unable to give me those assurances. Key parties had not been consulted. In particular, the PERC had not been asked for her view on whether the Chief Constable's return at that point could impact on her investigations. As the Commissioner highlighted in her letter to the Public Audit Committee last week, the Chief Constable's leave of absence had allowed the PERC to interview staff in a safe space, helping to minimise any concerns that might have, had, they may, might have had about being involved in the investigation. I'm sure 
that Parliament will agree that it is difficult to understand how a decision could be made for the Chief Constable to return without first confirming that doing so would not undermine the independent PERC investigation or the confidence of staff engaged in that process. Another area of particular concern was that there did not appear to be a robust plan in place to protect the well-being of officers and staff who had raised complaints or who may have been asked to play a role in the investigation. A number of these officers and staff were based at the Tilly Allen headquarters in close proximity to the Chief Constable and were in positions where they could expect to be dealing with the Chief Constable in the course of their work. This also raises questions about whether and to what extent those matters had formed part of the SPA's consideration of the issue. I would also highlight that Police Scotland's own senior command team had not been told about the decision even at the late stage. I took the view that these clear deficiencies in the process were completely unacceptable. I made clear to the former chair that I could not have confidence in a decision that had been reached without such significant issues having been properly addressed. The former chair agreed that, before proceeding further, the SPA would carry out more engagement with the relevant persons, which I welcomed. I also advised that they should consider seeking advice from HMICS on how they should proceed in terms of process. It's important to stress that throughout this period, the government was not informed that the former chief executive had actually already written to Mr. Gormley to invite him to return. Presiding officers, presiding officer, to those who wish to criticise my actions, I ask them to consider this. Had the chief constable returned to work on the 10th of November, and had it then transpired that no consultation had taken place with any of the relevant interests, and further, that I had failed to ask any questions about that, I suspect the criticism would be harsher and in those circumstances would have been justified. The SPA subsequently reconsidered the issue on the 10th of November and decided to continue the Chief Constable's leave and has continued to do so at subsequent reviews. The new chair has expressed concern about the decision-making process around the board's previous decision and has already taken steps to improve the board's decision-making process, including the setting up of a complaints and conduct committee. The SPA is now engaging with the PIRC and committed to ensuring issues relating to the welfare of officers and staff involved in the investigations are fully consulted and considered. On the 21st of December, the chair said, I'm committed to working tirelessly and at speed to address the shortcomings which have been identified and to ensure that in future, the SPA's decision-making processes and wider governance arrangements meet the standards which should be expected of a major public body. The Police Investigations and Review Commissioner has confirmed that the investigations are progressing, though we do not have a firm timescale uh, for them being completed. It is in the interest of all parties that there is a thorough and effective investigation. I also understand Parliament's interest in this matter and the Public Audit and Post Legislative Scrutiny Committee raised it with the relevant Director General in the Scottish Government in an evidence session on unrelated matters on the 21st of December. The further information in this statement builds on the evidence provided in that session and the government will write to the committee later in the week. However, members must remember that there is an ongoing formal statutory complaints process and I would caution against expecting SPA or indeed government to give a blow-by-blow blow account while the investigation continues. 
Presiding officer, public bodies need to be able to inspire not only confidence as parliamentarians, but also that of the wider public. The SPA is next due to review the Chief Constable's leave on the 25th of January. Whatever decision it makes at that point, it is vital that it is based on a robust process that commands trust. I welcome the assurance the SPA has given that it recognises the importance of that and look forward to supporting them in whatever way we can. Thank you. We move now to questions. Liam Kerr to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Presiding Officer, at the outset, let me make clear I make no comment uh, either the substance of, uh, about either the substance of complaints against the Chief Constable or whether he should or should not be permitted to return to work. The issue here is the Cabinet Secretary's interference, and it is difficult not to suggest hypocrisy. He has repeatedly stood in this chamber and in response to problems I have raised with the police service, responded that it is an operational matter. Now it seems the test for whether Michael Matheson gets involved is not whether it is an operational matter, but whether it is in the political interest of Michael Matheson. And so, by way of reassurance, by way of reassurance, Will he tell the Chamber whether he took any legal advice prior to intervening in this matter, and if so, when he will publish it, along with any correspondence between himself and the SPA? And given the fact that this investigation has been dragging on for months now, will he say anything to the hard-working police officers and staff about when their force will have certainty about the Chief Constable position again? Cabinet Secretary. Um, uh, I'm disappointed by the tone of the member's question uh, and what is a particularly important issue. And as I said out in my statement, uh, the focus of uh, my involvement in this matter was to ensure that there was a robust, defendable process in place for the decision making made by the SPA in relation to the decision of the Chief Constable returning to his duties. And it was very clear to me well, you have a live investigation being undertaken by the PUC and that they had not been consulted in this matter, that we could not have confidence in that process. Additionally, the very fact that less than 24 hours before the Chief Constable was due to return to his duties, the command team in Police Scotland knew nothing about the decision that had been made by the SPA. And additionally, the fact that the SPA board had given no consideration to the welfare of those officers and staff who were involved in the complaints process, in my view, is simply unacceptable. To have stood by and allow the SPA to implement that decision without asking them to revisit the decision and to consider these matters before they come to a decision in the, on this matter, I believe would not have been acceptable. And that's why I asked them to reconsider it, and they did so. It is about the process being robust and defendable, not the outcome of that process. And in my view and in my assessment, it was very clear that the SPA had taken forward a process that was simply unacceptable and could not be defended. Daniel Johnson to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement. Policing in Scotland is in crisis. That is a crisis of governance, a crisis of leadership, and a crisis involving investigations into senior officers. And the actions of the Cabinet Secretary have turned that crisis into nothing short of a shambles. His intervention has effectively overturned the operational decision about the employment status of the Chief Constable. And by doing that, he has not only embroiled himself in the shambles, he's authored its latest chapter. That decision in law is the independent SPAs to make, one they made unanimously, and then you turned following Michael Matheson's direct intervention. The intervention the Cabinet Secretary should have made was to fix the governance, to sort the strategy, to get things moving back in the right direction, and he should have done that months ago, at the start of last year, when those issues became clear. Yeah. 
So is it not now an unavoidable conclusion that the Cabinet Secretary has prejudiced any future decision regarding Phil Gormley's employment status and his ability to return to work? And what is his response to the claim by the Chief Constable's lawyer that his intervention was unlawful? And finally, what confidence can the Scottish public have in the independence of the SPA if ministers uh, can so simply and easily intervene in the decisions that they make? Cabinet Secretary. Yep, also, let me deal with, first of all, in relation to this being an operational matter. This is not an operational decision-making matter. This was about the process of the SPA in making a decision, a matter that clearly there is government interest in how that has been taken forward. The member contradicted himself by then going on and saying that we should be addressing issues of governance. That's exactly what this decision was about, was about the governance process that they had put in place in arriving at this decision. And if the member is serious in saying to me that I should have ignored the welfare of those officers and staff who are part of that complaint process in this decision-making process, I think that is irresponsible on his part. And what I can also assure the member is that this was about making sure that we had a robust, defendable position on how they had assessed this matter and the decision which they had come to. And it was very clear in my assessment that simply had not happened. That is unacceptable. Not to consider the implications it has to a live investigation, not to consider the implications it's got for the welfare of staff and officers, and not to even engage with the senior command team within Police Scotland less than 24 hours before they were meant to implement the decision is simply, in my view, unacceptable. And what would have been unacceptable from a ministerial point of view was to simply sit back and not ask them to address these matters. And that's exactly what I did. And the chair, the former chair, agreed they would go and consider. Once they complete a robust and defendable process in considering these issues, it's for them to make the decision on how they move forward. But it was clear to me that was not the case when they presented this matter to me on the 9th of November. John Finney, to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of uh, uh, the statement. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, I have zero confidence in the Scottish Police Authority's decision on the 7th of November and consider your comprehensive inquiries uh, uh, entirely appropriate. Um, the Commissioner used the phrase a safe space and you go on to talk about the absence of a, in your statement of, quote, a robust plan to protect the well-being of officers and staff who have raised complaints or may be asked to play a role in the investigation. I think it's very important that colleagues near understand the wider message that come, comes out from all these uh, recent uh, events and the conflicting messages that have been sent. So, Cabinet Secretary, I want to ask you, and it's you I want to ask, I don't want to ask PERC, I don't want to ask the Scottish Police Authority, it's appropriate that you as Cabinet Secretary say what steps you will take to provide ongoing protection for the officers and staff who have courageously come forward with these complaints. Cabinet Secretary. Absent officer, I think um, uh, Mr Finney, given his previous experience in policing, uh, goes to the very heart of what is a key issue here and how this decision uh, was arrived at. And that's about the welfare uh, of uh, staff within the organisation who may be working in close proximity to the Chief Constable uh, should he uh, return. I've sought uh, through discussions with the new chair uh, to ensure that the process that they have in place in making decisions relating to this matter includes one which is defendable and is robust. And a key part of that is the welfare of officers and staff. Uh, the new chair has already given that commitment, has already set out their concerns about the process that was taken forward in arriving at the decision on the the 7th of uh, November. So I can give the member an assurance, having discussed this matter specifically with uh, the new chair, the public statements that have been made by the new chair of the Scottish Police Authority is that the issues relating to welfare will be a central consideration in making decisions about the ongoing leave arrangements for the Chief Constable. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will do so in his own remarks, but I would ask members just to be careful when phrasing questions not to prejudge the outcomes of any investigations. Lee MacArthur to be followed by Alec Neil. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I to thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement. Of course, the SNP government created the centralised uh, policing structure we now have in Scotland, which puts a heavy onus on the relationships between the Justice Secretary, Chief Constable and SPA Chair. 
Given that this sorry saga has dragged on now for months and we now have lawyers exchanging blows, does the Cabinet Secretary believe that it would be possible for him to have a functioning working relationship were the Chief Constable to return in due course? And in light of his earlier criticisms of the SPA board, who unanimously supported the return to work of Mr Gormley back in November, does he still have confidence in those members of that board who remain in place? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, sign officer, in relation to uh, the future decision of the SPA around uh, the Lee situation for the Chief Constable, I'm uh, very clear it's not the outcome of that decision, it is the process that they go through in making that decision, which needs to be one which is robust and is also uh, defendable. And if they make a decision uh, for the Chief Constable to uh, be reinstated uh, and they have a clear, robust and defendable process for making that decision, uh, then I uh, will accept that. What I can assure the member of is that in the discussions I've had with the new chair of the Scottish Police Authority is to make sure that the governance process that they have in place uh, for making decisions in relation, in relation to these matters is one that, is, that we can have confidence in. She has given me a commitment that they will ensure that is the case. I made reference to uh, the comments that she has made. The member will also be aware that I commissioned work uh, by, the, uh, by Malcolm Burr uh, and Nicola Merchant to look at the, some aspects of governance and also support uh, to the board. And that report is presently being considered by uh, the chair of the Scottish Police Authority to consider how it can be further supported and aided in that work. Uh, I've made it very clear, President Officer, in my statement, uh, I do not believe that the process that the Scottish Police Authority had in place in the 7th of November in arriving at this decision was one which was acceptable. And the new chair has given me a commitment that they will ensure that they have better governance in place in making these decisions in going forward. Alec Neal to be followed by Margaret Mitchell. Presiding officer, can I first of all say that the Cabinet Secretary not only had a right, but had a duty to make sure that the process was robust, not only in terms of looking after the welfare of the complainants, but in ensuring that the Chief Constable gets a fair hearing as well. He should not be tried in public by the media. Secondly, following on from uh, Liam MacArthur's point, can I say to the Cabinet Secretary, this issue does call into question the competence of some of the non-executive directors of the Scottish Police Authority, not only in relation to this issue, but in relation to other issues as well. And you only need to look at the evidence given to the Public Audit Committee to see the failings uh, that have taken place in the SPA governance procedures in recent times. Will he now review the individual performance of non-executive directors to ensure we don't have a repeat of the kind of incidents we've had in recent times. And thirdly, there are reports of some people allegedly delaying giving their evidence to the PUT review in relation to the complaints against the Chief Constable. And as I said, it's absolutely vital the Chief Constable is treated fairly and the complainants are treated fairly and the process is robust. But it does require, uh, to bring this to a timeous uh, conclusion, it does require all those involved in the investigation to cooperate fully on a timeous basis with the investigation. Would Mr Neil please Secretary bring his question to a timeous conclusion? Everybody does. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the member raises a number of uh, important uh, points there. And he, uh, first of all, he raised the issue about reviewing the individuals of the SPA who were involved in this uh, uh, decision back on the uh, 7th of uh, November. Uh, what I can say to the member is that uh, the chair of the uh, SPA is giving consideration as to how they will continue to support members in the uh, process around decision making relating to these matters. And part of the process that she has now put in place in order to address some of these issues is the Complaints and Conduct uh, Committee uh, with a specific group of uh, members of the SPA board upon it in order to consider these matters in much uh, greater detail. It was clear from the discussions I had with the SPA chair that she believes that will give much greater focus to these matters uh, in considering uh, these issues. And I hope the member would recognise that as being an important step in trying to strengthen uh, the processes relating to this issue and working with SPA board members and how they arrive at these uh, decisions. The member then went on to raise issues around the uh, PERC investigation and the uh, uh, suggestion that there may be a delay in taking evidence from individuals. Uh, the member will recognise that the PERC are conducting this investigation independently. Uh, the time frame is within their gift and that must be 
uh, respected. I, like many members, would wish this investigation to be uh, completed as early as possible because I believe that's in everyone's interest. But the reality is that the investigation will take as long as is uh, required. Um, and I would fully expect those who have a part to play in that to uh, fully cooperate uh, with that. But I'm sure the member will want to respect that process and recognise that the perk are taking it forward in a manner which allows them to investigate the issue thoroughly and also fairly. Uh, and the time frame for that can't be specified uh, as it could compromise uh, aspects of the investigation. Thank you. Margaret Mitchell, followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The SP is a statutory body which has the power alone to determine the Chief Constable's operational deployment status, not the Scottish Government. And this is essential to protect the independence of the Chief Constable. So unless the Cabinet Secretary has chosen to use his formal powers under the 2012 Act, any intervention on his part resulting in a unanimous decision of the SPA board being overturned could be ultra-virus. The Cabinet Secretary confirmed to me during topical questions on the 14th of November, five days after the 9th of November, that he had never used these formal powers. Can the Cabinet Secretary therefore confirm if he misled the Chamber in his response to me or if he has acted out with his powers? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the answer to uh, both those questions, one is uh, no, uh, because to use those formal powers of direction, um, an order would be also placed in Parliament, so it would be publicly uh, noted. Uh, secondly, it was a request I made to the Chair and a request which he agreed to. Uh, given the range of concerns which I raise with them. Uh, but I should uh, refer to uh, Margaret Mitchell's comments in relation to this matter, because I heard her on the radio earlier this morning, where she said that I should take an absolute interest in the governance and leadership of Police Scotland, uh, that I should take an active interest, that I should an absolute interest in the governance and leadership of Police Scotland. This was an issue of governance and having a robust, clear process in place. Uh, and that's why those concerns and questions were raised with the chair of the SPA and he agreed to revisit the matter in order to consider the issues that I raised with them and that was taken forward at the board on the 10th of uh, November. So on that basis, uh, President Officer, it's very clear, this was not a direction uh, under the statutory powers that ministers actually have. This was a request to the chair of the SPA and he agreed to take those concerns forward and that was considered at the SPA's consideration of this issue on the 10th of November. Rona Mackay to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Can the Cabinet Secretary give an update on the current position regarding the Chief Constable's leave of absence? Mr Secretary. Uh, so officer, as it stands at the present moment, the uh, Chief Constable's uh, leave of absence is being considered on a fortweekly basis by uh, the Scottish Police Authority. It was last uh, considered on the 19th of December uh, by the Scottish Police Authority, where they agreed to continue his period of extended leave. It will be considered again on the 25th of January, uh, and the SPA will give uh, consideration to a range of factors uh, in determining what further measures should be put in place or in relation to whether he uh, should continue on a period of leave. Jackie Bailey to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Presiding officer, legislation is clear. Operational policing decisions are a matter for the Scottish Police Authority, not the Cabinet Secretary. I can't help but wonder whether the Cabinet Secretary should have taken the time over the past year to sort out the SPA rather than sorting out individual decisions. The letter from the Commissioner tells us that had she been consulted, she would have been content with the Chief Constable's return. So can the Cabinet Secretary therefore tell me did he or his officials speak to the Commissioner about this and when? Did he or his officials speak to the Deputy Chief Constable Ian Livingston or the Senior Management Team at Police Scotland and when? And has he or his officials spoken to the Chief Constable Phil Gormley since the 7th of November 2017? Cabinet Secretary. Senator Officer, can I first of all deal with this issue again about this being an operational matter? This is an issue of governance within the SPA. It is not an operational matter, and the legislation is very clear in the divisions uh, relating to uh, these matters. Uh, she, she, made, she, she asked whether I had consulted the SP, if I had consulted uh, the PERC, whether I had consulted Police Scotland, um, or whether I had consulted any other parties, including the Chief Constable, uh, on the 9th of November. 
The issue here was for the SPA to undertake that consultation as part of the process in considering these issues. The reality is that on, when I met with the chair of the SPA on the 9th of November, he had not carried out that consultation. No consultation with the PUC, no engagement with Police Scotland on planning for this with the senior command team, and no consideration to the welfare of officers and staff. That would be a matter for the SPA to take forward. Given that this is on the afternoon of the 9th of November, when the Chief Constable was due to restart his duties on the 10th of November at 8 a.m., it was important that the SPA had the opportunity to go and look at that matter. And that's exactly what they did when they considered the issue at their board meeting on the 10th of November. I'm conscious I've got five more members wishing to ask questions. However, uh, we're already really running out of time. This is going to have a, a slight knock-on effect on the subsequent debate or possibly in decision time. But given the level of interest indicated simply by the number of members in this chamber, I'm going to let it run on. Fulton McGregor, followed by Maurice Corrie. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary expand on why there is a need for consultation with the PERC regarding the Chief Constable returning to work? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Officer, as I mentioned in my statement, I think it's important that while the PERC are leading an investigation into a complaint, uh, which if proven uh, has been assessed as could uh, amount to gross misconduct, it's important that in any decisions which the, uh, the SP are making in relation to individuals involved in that, that they give due consideration to uh, the investigation. And I think that's why it's reasonable to expect that any discussions about the Chief Constable returning uh, to work should be informed by close liaison with the PERC about the stage the investigation has reached and any possible ramifications um, of a reinstatement for those investigations. Uh, this is about the SPA board having the fullest possible picture and understanding before they make such an important decision. Maurice Corrie, followed by Claire Hockey. <coughs> Uh, could the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the Chief Constable's leave of absence was at the Chief Constable's own request in order to allow him time and space to focus on his preparations and addressing the allegations against him? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, the leave of absence was requested by the Chief Constable and it was agreed by the Scottish Police Authority. Clear hockey followed by Jenny Mara. Can the Cabinet Secretary give Parliament an assurance that the SPA will consult with all those necessary prior to future decisions regarding the Chief Constable's return to work? Cabinet Secretary. Absent Officer, as I mentioned earlier in my response, the new Chair of the Scottish Police Authority, Susan Deacon, has given such a commitment uh, that she will ensure that there is a more robust process around uh, the assessment of these matters, which will involve looking at aspects relating to uh, welfare of officers and staff, engagement with the command team within uh, Police Scotland, and also it uh, lays on with the PERC. As the letter from uh, the Police Investigation and Review Commissioner uh, sets out, that engagement has already started uh, with the uh, Scottish Police Authority, and she's given a commitment that that will continue to be the case uh, going forward. Jenny Mara to be followed by George Adam. Presiding officer, if the Cabinet Secretary was so concerned on the 9th of November about the protection of police employees who had made complaints against the Chief Constable, why didn't he exercise his power of direction under Section 5 of the Police and Fire Reform Act? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, because the former chair of the SPA agreed to reconsider these issues and they reconsidered at their board meeting on the 10th of November. George Adam. Thank you, President of Officer. We've heard during the Cabinet Secretary's statement that this is a very difficult and complex situation for all those involved. And with this in mind, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that this is not an issue that anyone should be playing politics with and the focus needs and must remain on ensuring that the correct procedures are followed to make sure that both those making the complaints and the Chief Constable are treated properly and fairly? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, as I said in my statement, it's important that the process is one which is robust and is defendable. And that's in the interest of all parties, uh, the Chief Constable and those who uh, are complainants within uh, Police Scotland, both officers and uh, staff, and also for the integrity of the uh, process. And it's in everyone's interest to ensure that the uh, process is allowed to run its course and it's given the opportunity to carry out the investigation in a thorough and detailed fashion. Thank the Cabinet Secretary and all members, particularly the last five, for the brevity of their questions. That concludes our statement. We'll now move on to the next item of business, which is the Glasgow 2018 European Championships. And we'll just take a few moments for the Minister's 
and members to change seats.